what's up? It's Monday. We made it through the weekend that everybody was working for. I don't know. Feels like just another day, eh? It's what uh, it's what we're all thinking, huh? So here we are. Got a great got a great guest tonight. Got some great people all week, actually. Um, we're talking about passion. Talking about living your happy life, your best life, following that passion to um, what makes you feel good. And um, tomorrow night, I've got a local guy from here in Richmond, Virginia. His name is Eric Stanley. And he is one heck of a musician and a heck of a soul and a heck of a guy. He plays the electric violin. And I met him a couple years ago and we've become friends and I just love his vibe. And I'm looking forward to introducing him to you guys. And um, then on Wednesday, I got an old friend, Al Thompson. He is an actor out of New York City, and um, I have known Al since 1998, I believe. Actually, before that, maybe 97. We were in acting classes together in New York. He's done a lot of cool stuff, and um, looking forward to catching up with him and, and uh, getting some insight from him on how he lives his life, because he's a happy dude. And then on Thursday, we have a great guest, uh, another great friend of mine, Alex Sulkin, one of the showrunners from Family Guy. And Alec, uh, I met Alec back in 2004 as Family Guy was about to be rebooted. We had been canceled for a little while and Alec is uh, an amazing writer, wrote, wrote the Ted movies uh, along with Wellesley Wilde and Seth MacFarlane. And uh, he's written a million Family Guys. He's done a ton of other stuff and he's a great actor too um, and, and a great friend. So he'll be on Thursday and I don't think I'm gonna do Fridays anymore. You know, Friday rolls around, I feel like just chilling out and um, you know, not not worrying too much about being on at eight o'clock here on the East Coast, um, but yeah. So we're we're talking about passion, and my guest tonight is John Viner, who is himself a great actor, writer, filmmaker. He um, is is noted for his Family Guy stuff. He's he's been writing for that since the early days, two thousand four, two thousand five, since the reboot. And um, he and I are very good friends, and um, he's got a lot of different things. He, he's acted in Arrested Development, Entourage, Law and Order. What else we got? Modern Family, the show Dads, um, which ran for a while on Fox. Um, he was, did a bunch of sketches on Conan. He was in the Ted movies. I can't remember if he was in A Million Ways to Die in the West or not. I'll have to ask him. And um, done a ton of voiceover stuff, Family Guy, American Dad. Phineas and Ferb. Uh, he was also on the Cleveland Show, and he wrote for the Cleveland Show for a while, and and voiced uh, a bunch of the characters on that show, and um, has made short films, and has I believe been in Sundance and some other things with his work, and is just a super creative dude. He was uh, born and raised in Manhattan. I think he was born there, um, but he's going to hit me up any second to join this thing, and um, and we'll chat, but. You know, is everybody using this time? Are you are you using this quarantine time for stuff other than being bored out of your freaking mind and wishing you could do stuff you used to do and watching things get canceled left and right? I saw Comic Con is canceled this year. It's a bummer, man. But you know, if if stuff gets shut down, you got to come up with other stuff. You know, you got to think. You got to you got to figure out what else you can do. This thing has not been scrolling, so maybe John is trying to join me. But um. Yeah, so no Comic-Con this year. I've been to every Comic-Con since 2005, I think. And um, it will be very strange not getting to go to San Diego and see all the madness being the throngs of of nerd paradise, which is just the coolest thing. Um, but, you know, we'll come up with something else to do the weekend of July 25th. And, um, you know, I can't imagine there's going to be concerts this summer. We're going to take my daughter to see Taylor Swift at the new football stadium in L.A. And now that's uh, canceled. I think Dead and Company is, um, there's Johnny V. Uh, Dead and Company was going to be on tour. I can't imagine that happen. But you got to just come up with other cool stuff to do and stay inspired. And, um, and talk to handsome friends like this guy. 
Be somebody. Be somebody. I, I had requested, Mike. I'm not good with the technology. I'm. I apologize. No, no. This thing wasn't scrolling for some reason, so I didn't oh. see that, that you had requested. So thank you for requesting. You look very, um, uh, very James Bond. Maybe very um, Mad Men. Yeah, older James Bond. Maybe James Bond's uh, dad. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, it's, it's Jimmy Senior. Hey, Mike Deslitz is on there. Uh, yes. Mike, you did. Yeah. You know, we can comment on that shit rolling by. Um, I, I, I know this is this is all new to me. I, can I, I? I'm sorry. My I need a beer. My my woman is here. Oh, good. Can I have a beer on the air or no? Yeah, let's see your woman. It's a it's a Quilmes. It's a, it's Spanish for kill me. Oh, good. Okay. Okay. A little, a little okay. comedy. Okay, I get no it. Audience. Was that a little side sip there? I don't want to ruin the the. I don't want to go profile on you. I want you to have full contact. Oh, that that's what I'm here for, buddy. Um, <laughs> Thank you for having me on. Hey, thank you for, for being on. I, you know, I, I, when I started doing these things, I just I figured I'd, I'd get you on here, and, and here you are. So, um, so you're, you're in L.A., and you've got a, a natural wood fire burning behind you? Yes, it's, it's very consistent. I get, I get the best wood, so oh, it, it, it keeps wow. an even. Well, you're in L.A. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I, I believe in the gas fire. I don't like cleaning up. I'm an old man. I'm a lazy man. I like to turn yeah. it on and off. Yeah. Does it, does it dry your throat out? Uh, I don't get that close, but yeah, uh, yeah I, if you're saying LA, yes, it does. I, okay. I, I, right. I miss I miss the East Coast weather. Yeah, no, it's it's humid here. It rained all morning here in Richmond, and uh, then it turned into a beautiful sunny afternoon. But the, the, we have we have gas logs here too. Get it, gas logs. Um, but uh, <laughs> after they've been burning for a little while, it just starts sucking the the uh, the moisture out of the room. I, I find. So. Well, also, I leave the doors open because it's. Uh, this is really just an affectation. I'm. I'm. Of course. This is just. A, I'm just saying. I'm on a set. This is not actually where I live. Right. Right. I got everybody you. in LA just lives on a set. So. And that's just a plywood fireplace with two by fours propping it up. From yeah. Behind. There's just. There's. There's some small people holding it. Okay. All right. Small as in stature or uh, status. <laughs> well, I. You know, I don't like to judge, but uh, let's just say I used to be one of them, and now I don't do that anymore. Okay. Well, I'm you, in you, front of the camera. You qualified them. Um, so, uh, so yeah, man. So I don't know if you've tuned in any of these, but we're just talking about, you know, when, once this quarantine stuff hit and there wasn't much to do, I had a little fun with some wigs for a couple of days and threw some stuff on Instagram. Saw but that. then I thought, you know, why not just talk to some friends? And if we're, I don't, I don't like tuning into things where people are just shooting the shit like we've been doing for a few minutes. Um, all right. I, I'm sorry. I, I, no, 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 this is fine. This is the warm up. This is the, the, the pre con. Um, get it? A little pre con comes out first. And then, um, and now the conversation. So uh, I'm talking about, you know, living your best life, following your dreams. What, what, you know, what inspires you? What, why you, why you do what you do? And um, we've talked to a lot of cool, successful people funny people and um you know i guess it all starts when you're a kid like when did when did you you, you grew up in manhattan correct i grew up in manhattan i, I uh yeah I, I i think you uh i mean i don't know if there's the comedy answer or the right answer but the, i think i think uh i enjoyed comedy just in general i i i gravitate gravitated towards it i feeling probably slightly neglected at home uh found attention through it I'm going to adjust so, my lighting while we talk. Yeah, no, I, I wanted to see the rest of the pool table. I, uh, oh, there it is. In the clear. There, now we go. Okay, good. Hold on. I got to just turn this on like setting nope. number one. I, w I was going to get one of those, but I, I wanted it with balls on top. Um, okay. <laughs> came from nothing. Uh, no, I, 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 I came from a very wealthy background and we lost it all and then I had to be funny. Uh, no, I, I, I grew up uh, like just, you know, loving 80s comedy and, and late 70s comedy. And, and, you know, you, you start doing impressions and trying to do what people thought was funny in a movie. And, How and old then you? when I got to high school, I started doing comedy stuff with Alec, who, who you have on, on uh, Thursday, because you don't have Fridays now, they're dark. You and Alex and Sulkin went to Alex high school Sulkin. Did Wellesley uh, go to high school with you guys too? Wellesley no, Wellesley, Wellesley went to college with Alec and then uh, we, we all met up in New York after. And did you uh, yeah. and another another uh, family guy person, Ted Jessup? Did you know him in high school, or or just meet him in co later? In no, no, he's he's a few he's a few he's, years he's old. Older. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, I won't say. I mean, because in L.A., you know, it's it's impolite. But you don't uh, want to age anyone. No, no, we're all we're all funny forever. And uh, right, so, so you were uh, so like in middle school, high school. Were you like popular kid? Did you play sports? And then were you funny on top of that, or what did what was? Uh, it game? was New York City, so there were no th th there were no sports. Okay, you didn't have like um, squash at the. Uh... <laughs> yes, they did have squash. You're right. Okay. So everything was was minimal, but. Uh, the sport was suppressing poor people, and we were good at it. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, but as you know, I, uh, I I have family from Richmond. Yeah. And uh, so I, I I that has nothing to do with anything. But uh, I I like it though. But no, but I, I I grew up basically like riding my bicycle on on avenues next to buses that were trying to get me off the, the you know possibly physically moving me out of the way. So it was not right. it was not an athletic experience. So for the most part, I think. TV and movies became a much bigger part of my life than sort of sports and hanging out and doing recreation outside. Right. So did you and your buddies watch stuff? Or, I mean, I'm sure you watched a lot by yourself, as we all do, you know, whatever, when you're alone. But then did you bond with friends over that? Like, did you bond with Alec over the comedy stuff? Yeah, I think, I mean, even the same thing with, you know, like you meeting Seth and you sort of have the same reference points of things that you found funny or mm -hmm. not funny. I mean, I, I think I think I took a lot more serious back then. Like if you were to I, I think I was I was uh, interested in a girl at some point and uh, there you know, back when there were like three TV channels and it was probably five thirty or six in the afternoon. And uh, she the, our options were The Simpsons or Home Improvement uh, as a rerun. And she was like, oh, Home Improvement's on. And I was like, oh, we're 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 done. Yeah. But but, you know, so I, I think just in the same way with friendships, you you sort of gravitate towards people who like the same things that you did, you know, in, in high school as, as we were, I was not in any way unique is that you, you know, we watched Caddyshack a million times. We watched all the Monty Pythons, the Faulty Towers, you know, the, yeah. any Steve Martin stuff, you know, loving Eddie Murphy's albums, memorizing them. So, you <laughs> know, which I could play you know, great today. Sorry. Which would oh, yeah, play, play great, great today. Eddie Murphy's stuff. Um, yeah, go watch Raw or Delirious, people, and and think about how life has awesome changed. Uh, yeah, it's you can't get away with it, but that doesn't mean at the time it wasn't funny. So. It was It's still. I mean, it's funny now. It makes you cringe. You know, there there's funny, and then there's what's acceptable. Because I mean, you can pretty much if you're a good person and you you know value other humans and you're you know you have empathy for people. That's where your heart is. Now, you can go ahead and make a freaking joke. And you know that's not how you really feel. It's just a joke. It's a generalization about how different cultures are or whatever. And it's often extremely hilarious. But you often can't say it now, um, you know, without, without everyone getting upset. So that's not a complaint. That's just a fact. I, I agree cool. with you. I, I, I think it's getting harder and harder to toe, toe the proper line. So... You know, I, I, I think- Toe as in of, camel toe? Yes, as in- Is that okay? Uh, I, Can I say camel toe? Is anyone offended? <laughs> All we're getting is what about grumpy, old grumpy men? I think you mean grumpy old men, uh, yeah. which I, I saw on a plane. Uh, yeah, Steve, I, I, Martin, I, Steve Martin, the jerk. Yes, absolutely. Drew, your enthusiasm. It's uh, one of the absolute best, but on a plane. No, no, I'm just saying I, I saw a Grumpy Old Men on a plane because I love, you know, Walter Matthau and Jack Lemmon. Right. Uh, so, so, I, I mean, my, my point was just I actually think we're at a point that or we're getting at Family Guy or, or any type of show sometimes. You know what? I'm sorry. So, so much cheese OMG is, a, is offended because he, as he's a camel amputee. Oh. So, you know what? You make it a camel nub, which is, you know, <laughs> if, you, if they if – they, grafted your skin properly it could look like a perfect penis so camel nub so don't be offended i'm sorry i cut you off no i'm glad i'm glad see this is the kind of thing we have to be sensitive to that's right which we didn't get to before so i i, I just think that you're you know that a lot of shows that maybe put in a talking animal like you know you can get away with stuff on bojack horseman because you're t it's through a horse talking instead of a person and so same with family guy yeah, with Family Guy, we can get away with, you know, if the, the rats are talking or cavemen are talking, you're not putting it on any specific person and you can get away with, with right. more comedy, you know, just so other people... I mean, I, people just seem like they're ready to get angry most of the time. Sorry, I'm getting attacked by my dogs. Hey, well, let's see that cutie pie. Is that Mavis? Oh, well, one of, that's, that's Mavis. And then this is the new 
Bobo, and he's he's about to drink my beer. So sorry, right. you love professional. Your and you have a and you have a, a lady laughing. In the yeah, back look, he, he remembered us, uh, Franz Guden talk. Yes, this is that was this when you were. Uh, yeah, do it. Yeah, but but I mean, you were you were Herbert. Oh, that's Herbert. Yes, it's the Glückenspiel. Oh, come There's, on, oh. <laughs> come on, bring that German sausage over here. Just tasting everyone. You wouldn't want to hear that out of a real person. Like you don't want to see me saying that, but it's somehow okay with a a decrepit old, a harmless old man. I don't know, harmless, but yes, yes, he's not. He's never, get, he's never going to catch the Roadrunner. You know, no, he's modern never, day Coyote yeah. Roadrunner. No, he will never. And, and by the way, he, I don't think he could do anything if he did catch him. Well, you never know. I mean, that's true. All right, so he's he could be harmful. He just won't catch him. All right, that's right. That's right. He's just a terrible. I don't know. He sucks. But well, it's also funny. tough that now you can't even. You know, it's gotten to the point where even if you want to attack some something or make fun of something that's that's inappropriate you can't even have a character say the inappropriate thing so you can make fun of it because it would be giving voice to something inappropriate so it just it gets very difficult i think now compared to what it used to be to, to make fun of you know like the archie bunkerness of it that you can't you can't have the bigot right. that you can make fun of because you're giving a bigot a voice so it's, right. it's just it's a difficult time that's right. All. And I, I, actually, I understand why, because, you know, as a white hetero male, you know, that, that white hetero males have been and, you know, probably still are sort of making the rules, unfortunately, at this point. So, you know, we're sort of at a privileged place and other people go through a lot of shit that we haven't had to go, go through. And now they're tired of it. And that I can understand and totally respect, but it's the people who, you know, are, are super sensitive that are like, you know, hipsters or whatever that are going to get upset about stuff. It's like, what are you talking about? But, you know, I, I you know, I, I play Cleveland. And I don't know what it's like to, or I, I get a sense of what it's like. I've been with black friends when they're catching some racist shit here and there. And it's just, you know, and I talk about it. And it's like the tip of the iceberg. And people just put up with a, a ton of shit. And, you know, so I understand people wanting a voice and wanting other people to quit fucking joking about it. But, you know, at the same time, I'm coming from, I think, and I know you are, just we're, we're coming from good human places and we help people who need help and we are empathetic and whatever. But, you know, I think at this point, I'm not complaining. I'm, I'm, I feel so lucky to be on Family Guy and be, being, being able to make the jokes that we make, being able to work for Seth, you know, along the way, you know, there were I had other opportunities for comedy stuff and it, they just didn't feel right because it was, you know, from the get go, there was, was sort of, well, you know, don't do, nah, whatever. And then, but with Seth, he's just laughing his ass off. He's like, yeah, put it in. And well, you know, also, I mean, Family Guy, outside of the fact that it is running forever, and as, and thank you for liking me as Roy Family, Roy Family. I was on American Dad, uh, but I, I yes. mean, we, the the fun of the show is that it's kind of like an etch a sketch. So you just you do your little play, and and then you just shake it out, and you start the next thing. So if something lands, it's great, and you have fun with it comedically, but you don't have to get stuck with it. And I don't know. I, I just, I, I mean, it's, I've loved being a family guy for that very purpose is that you can kind of throw anything up there, any kind of style of comedy. And sometimes it lands, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it ages well, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it ages better than it, when it aired. You, you never yeah. know. Like, yeah. like things come and go. Like Bruce Jenner. Yeah. We, we were ahead of him. Yeah. That uh, somehow, somehow somebody knew uh, they had him as a what was it a female I cheerleader think, i think we all knew but yes yeah um, you, know, you know um yeah man so, all right so in high school you were a funny guy and then in college now, now when did you start doing stand-up or actually performing were you in school uh, plays or anything uh <laughs> I, I i again alec was there in high school but yeah i was doing plays and and uh and and alec and i used to do we would go up to people and ask if they because we had have an assembly once a week at least and then people would like, oh, they'd announce that, like, uh, if you're in this club, please assemble on Wednesday at blank time. Right. So then we we said, hey, can we can we do your announcement as a as a joke? So then people right. would let us go up on stage and do skits or do things like through the microphones to make fun of teachers and all that stuff. And that was that was, I think, where I, I, I kind of got addicted to 
making fun of people and getting a laugh. Yeah. Sometimes not from the person you make fun of, but sometimes even from them. Right. I think I think that's like you know you know you're doing something right if the person you make fun of likes your impression. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you don't want to be a dick. You don't want to like make somebody have a complex or feel bad. But you know, if, if that that is that is the best when when you're pointing something out and you know, comedy is truth or whatever, and it's it's kind of that un unspoken thing that gets spoken sometimes it gets a huge laugh and if someone can go along with it then they're great and if not then we'll have someone else do their voice on family guy yeah um, sometimes sometimes the person can't even do themselves well right because right. they don't see the humor in themselves so it's like no you sound like this right no do that do that dumb thing you always do what oh um anyway uh which of your stand-up bits kill oh, the jordan. hardest oh it's jordan rubin what's up man jordan do you uh, want to do one of these things sometime i think that's why he's on the feed oh shit man. Uh, yeah no it's it's really just self-advertising but uh yeah not i i was never very good at stand-up i enjoyed doing it i think my sean connery did okay yeah uh, bam. Let's more of that t t tell me as sean connery when you started doing stand-up uh as uh this is my dog just destroying a couch. Sorry. Uh, when did I start? Uh, see, I can't come up with funny stuff. I could just give you my one bit that I like doing, which was uh, Sean Connery saying car keys. Car keys. I Sean did. Connery saying khakis. Car keys. And, and Sean Connery saying carcass. Car keys. So that was, that was somehow a closer in 1996 so which is why i never really graduated to shows that were during nighttime but Which your uh khakis were in the khakis of, of that the of yeah the okay i got it, got it. <laughs> all right i get it um, i get it yeah and then i you know i used to have a list of things that you would never hear sean connery say and i don't even remember any of them um i can't say them because you can't do jokes anymore but okay. uh it was oh, a yeah. 19 yeah. when he was on Barbara Walters talking about how it's you know you sometimes it's okay to slap a woman, woman. <laughs> yeah just yeah. to get her to after she's made her point you, uh, <laughs> but she continues talking I, I mean not that this is interesting but it's like it's also the reality of how your life moves forward is uh, uh, my girlfriend Lily was watching all the all the uh, the movies in order and I was like you're gonna you're gonna be less interested in him as it, get, it goes along and she's like no he's the most handsome I'm like he gets a little, and I, if I show you this interview, you're not going to like him. Yeah. Did you show her? <laughs> I have not shown her the uh, the slapping women video yet. No. All right. Well, but, uh, but I'm saying it's, a, it's a, you know, it's, I think it's, this is a really tough business because everybody's getting canceled and you can be amazing for a long time and then do something considered wrong for the moment. And, yeah. you know, I mean, I still like the Mad Max movies. Okay. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's not controversial. Yeah. No, there's plenty of little jokes that uh, need need uh, little statements at the beginning of videos now. Um, but hey, man, uh, what else are you doing during the quarantine? So just to shift gears for a moment. So what do you? Well, let me. If you, uh, you walk you know, the dogs, clearly. I walk. Well, no, I leave the door open. Um, okay. And then I go. Did you clean up the the poops? And my girlfriend goes. Oh, I thought you were going to do that. And I go. No, I I pay for everything. But. Uh, and I got the dog you wanted. But anyway, it's fine. It's fine. Um, no, she's upset. Sorry. Um, but then don't be in my house when I'm doing big interviews. Uh, right. Big time. Uh, no, I, I just got to work. I felt very fortunate uh, on Aaron Lee's new Jack Black animated show. Okay, um, sweet. So that's, that's starting up on Netflix. Uh, so I, I just What's that the, called? That's uh, called The Colony. It's about a, a nudist colony that... that that Jack Black's character takes over when his father is deceased. Okay. Uh, now, and... see, there's there's one that you want to see in animation and not live action. Well, I, I yes, I think yeah, I mean, I think the fun of nudity, especially for the actors, you know, because you want to cons can you know keep a consistent length. Uh, so you know, just as as an actor, but yeah, I, I I think it'll be I I it seems like it'd be really funny. The characters that I saw that were drawn were very funny, so I'm I'm excited about that. But yeah, I, I think the so, one thing that's been fun about not fun, but like being in quarantine is animation doesn't suffer and writing doesn't have to go away for us yeah. at least in the moment. Correct. So that's that that's been good. At the same time, I I've been desperate to I, anytime I have to do the thing that I set out to do. Like I I I think I've wanted to read War and Peace for forty years now, and 
And every time I want to read it, I just start calling any agent or manager or lawyer and say, can you get me work so I don't have to sit down and do this, this reading? How many pages is War and Peace? Well, my copy is three separate books. But uh, yeah, it's, I, I, yeah, we're even talking about it, I'm like, Mike, do you have any jobs I can work on? Because I'd just, I'd rather go to work for 50 yeah. hours a week writing jokes than to sit down with myself and my slow reading ability. Right. I hope to soon. Um, yeah. So yeah, animation, you know, family guys still know. Are you, now explain, um, we'll, we'll backtrack in a minute, but for now, are you still working some on family guy and are you on an overall Fox deal? Is that what's going on? Uh, it's a or huge Disney? deal. No, I'm not. I, I, I'm unfortunately, I'm good enough to employ, but not to keep. No, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, no, I'm, I, I was on family guy last year, part-time, uh, and I've been part-time for the last five years or so, and it's been great. And then at the same time, I was working full-time, for the most part, uh, on the show Duncanville. Yes. Uh, that just started airing, and we just had our seventh episode air last night. Um, and so, so, that, so the way that works is, uh, as far as the structure of, of your employment is, once you kind of establish yourself, then you get a deal with, with a production company that makes a bunch of stuff. And you can sort of work on some of their shows while you're developing your own series often, or they just want you to run something uh, like spend, you, you would spend X number of days at Family Guy, but then you would spend most of your time running Duncanville. Is that? that well, is I, that I was that? just, I was, I was co-EP on Duncanville, but I, I, yes, I spent most of my time on that show. I, I mean, I feel like everybody has their own independent or sorry, own unique way i mean the thing that's always frustrating is anytime someone says hey can i pick your brain about how to get in the business it's like it, nobody you know no two people have the same story yeah so you know i i think it would be nice if you were like i think i think the pros and cons not the I think I think the pros and cons. Not that it's interesting. Did the Did the Olsen twins get in the same way? Uh, well, one of them got in one way, and the other one just uh, you know followed her sister. Okay, all right. When, when you meant that, point, did you mean like, a, like something that might have a whistle noise when they got in? Yeah, we often <laughs> we often uh, punctuate a punchline with a whistle, like uh, uh, sometimes yeah. a sexual whistle. Yep, it'd be like, uh, oh yeah, let me give her the dry thumb. Uh, and that now, those of you who aren't who aren't familiar, it's it's not a friendly way to no. To you know, engage hey, you give him the dry thumb. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, you give it anyway. There's no. <laughs> um, so, uh, so yeah, so getting into the business. So, how did you get into the business? So, well, I was doing stand up, and and I in, where in, in New, New York, York City. Yeah, mm -hmm. so in New York, I was doing stand-up with Alec. Then Alec uh, and Wellesley came out here. They now were very talk helpful. About, talk about doing stand-up. How did how does that? How did you start doing stand-up? So I, I assume that some people are watching who are like, "Man, I want to go do some cool. You know, I want to do this thing that I'm thinking about, but I'm not sure how to go about it." How did you, How did you start doing stand-up? Well, I don't know if Jordan Rubin's still on here, but I I uh, I saw him do stand-up one night, and I was like, "Oh my god, anyone can do this." So there you go. Yeah. Um, no, and and I mean he continued <laughs> uh so he must have stopped watching um but yeah no i i, I we had a friend uh arden marine who's uh, done very well she's an actress and and has done a bunch of comedy stuff and stand up and sketch and things and she's on a uh i guess uh, insatiable yeah anyway right now on netflix mm. with debbie ryan mm. Mm. insatiable that's that i find that cleveland might be insatiable mm. <laughs> Yeah, so she, she did stand up, uh, you know, a handful of times when, you know, she got out of college and she turned to me and Alex, she goes, because we all went to high school together. And she's like, you guys are so funny. You should do this, too. You, you know, and then within a few months of her doing it or six months, she wound up on a TV show. I think it was called Working with Zach Galifianakis. And I could be wrong with the name. But anyway, so she was on an NBC show. So then Alec and I were like, hey, we're going to do this. Uh, and, and that was 20 something years ago. I still still haven't. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Did but, you do it individually or did you guys ever get up there together and do like a sketch or? Well, yeah. So once once we were doing stand up for about two years and going to all the same open mics with, you know, John, uh, sorry, Julia Sharp and, and Dan Cronin who and Andres Dubuchet, Andre Dubuchet. What, what, what year? 96 to 96 to 98. Okay. 
uh, yeah, so we were all sort of this this caravan of of miserable guys. Did you ever do college. like the Luna Lounge or um, uh, any of that? Yeah, there was like like a collective unconscious. Yeah, and uh, you know, and, and Brody was a big part of that. And, Remember, and the state was always around. UCB had just started up. Yes, in New York. yes. So okay. a, a, after two years of doing stand up, which was fine, but you know, like I, I wound up working the door of stand up New York so that I could get spots to go on for a few minutes at the end. And, you know, Alec and I both wanted to do something more narrative and sketch. And so uh, we had two friends, uh, Josh Weinstein and Daniel Milder, who were doing like a two man thing. So we said, why don't we just do a sketch show? So we started doing at the same time that UCB was starting up, we did our much less successful uh non-improv but but we did a sketch show and and it was really fun um yeah i i so out of that alec was mostly writing and then he he wound up getting hired on the late late show and left so then we tried coming out to la with our sketch group thinking we would be unique and welcomed and all that was late late show in la then yeah so it just started up great yeah. Kilborn. yes okay Kilborn. and jordan uh, rubin wants to know uh how you knew it when when it was time to quit <laughs> Um, well, Jordan wouldn't understand this, but when you get hired as a writer, uh, then you want to use all your jokes to keep that job. Um, you just don't want to keep wandering the earth. Uh, but yes, I, that was when it was, I actually felt, I mean, as, as you remember, I got on, on family guy and, and I was so nervous and every single premise that I'd ever thought of, I would pitch in the room. So how did, then, how did you get to family guy? So, so you came out to LA and you started doing stand up. Did you? I think you were in some sketches on Kilborn. Did you write for that as well? Or I, I, was, jokes, or? I was submitting, I was submitting jokes like as a faxer. Um, yeah. And, and that was, that was really, fun. hi, Leslie. Uh, it, that was really fun uh, to submit, but you know, you get, you know, you get paid, I don't know what it was, $50, or $75 or whatever it was for a joke mm -hmm. if you got it on. And so I would, I, when I was in New York, I was waking up for, you know, cause it's you know, three hours different. So I could wake up early before I went to my regular job and work on the jokes and even work on the jokes till lunch at work if they weren't looking and then right. submit them. And then uh, ultimately they let me, when Alec and Wellesley were on the show, uh, Matt Harowitz, who's, who's a writer producer, uh, was, was booking the comics and he booked me. So then when I came out and they booked me, I had just played Chevy Chase. Thank you. Uh, I'm just gonna- so You played Chevy Chase in the Gilda Radner biopic, correct? Yes. And, and so I, I came out and they let me do stand up on the Late Late Show. And at the time they said they needed a war, uh, warm up comic. So okay. I, I said, yeah, I mean, I, I was of the mind that I wasn't gonna come out to LA and not have a job because then I'd wind up working in a shoe store. So as the right. joke goes, I wound up uh, getting fired from warm up and I worked in a shoe store. So that, uh, that I, right. I was the opposite of be somebody. Um, right. so, now, so then I would just do, uh, bits uh, to women who would come into the shoe store and, and they weren't taken well by the owners or the women. But I was like, you, would you date someone? I'm not hitting on you, but would you date someone who worked at a shoe store? <laughs> and sometimes I'd get answers of like, well, it would depend on who, but most women are like, I gotta be honest, I would not. And I was like, no, I, I'm just checking that I'm right to be miserable. Right. Um, so anyway, after, after right. And you they know, would say, take your hand off my breast, sir. Yes. I, I, um, well, I had to size them up and then I, I realized it was a shoe store. Uh oh, but you know, we're making jokes, everybody out there. These are jokes. Um, where you, I was in Shoving Buddies. Now, uh, now, hey, Jay here, everybody. I see a, a question from uh, Gina Lalini. What would your career choice be if you were not a comedy writer? Let's just say that if you were not in the entertainment business. All right, all right. well, if it were a choice, uh, I'm told sommelier by the woman who is in my room. But okay. uh, I, I think that would just be uh, yeah, that'd be fun for a while. I, I, I think, Molly, I, okay. I don't know. I, I think being, being, uh, phenomenally wealthy to the point where you can give money away and seem like a good person, but mm -hmm. actually not be a great person. Cause you just have so much more that it doesn't, it matter. doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's really just good PR. I mean, it's, it's, it's in the Leo DiCaprio vein, like of just like, look how great a person I am, but it's really to get sex. Right. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what makes me happy. I think, I think work-life balance changes as you get older. And I mean, as you know, like I, I don't have a family, but if I had a family right now, I'd probably be sick of spending time with them. But I think for the initial part, in the same way that when I said I wanted to read War and Peace, when you're working full time, you're like, oh, if I could just have some time to myself. And then when you have time to yourself, you're like, you know, after you, you know, you 
you look at what you actually you know like it's not fun to practice a guitar it's not it's not even fun to play with yourself after a while you know you you find that you run out of tricks your um, penis sorry play with yourself i was just saying in general i wasn't being sexual but yes sure oh, let's include I'm everything sorry. hey not um, doing it you know i mean you know, once once you've 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 played with every water jet in the bathtub you realize who am i what is this right um, so, yeah i don't know i mean i i when i was younger my parents wanted me to be in some kind of finance or law or something like that. And I, I don't think I ever would have been happy with that. But I, I think that what I like about this business, which I think is different, some standups I feel like are actually happier on stage away from people. What yeah. I like about, what I like about uh, working Family Guy, Cleveland show, any of these uh, comedy shows is that you aren't working in a vacuum and that you're really just making each other laugh. So it is a communal and, yeah. And it's a social experience. And yeah. so I think whatever I would do besides this, I would be happier, whether it would be teaching or something. I just, I like the interaction more than just sort of, I can, I can never be a painter or something like that. Right, right. You need to, you need to, uh, to, to be with folks, be with people. So, um, so I'm talking with John Viner, my good friend and uh, Hollywood uh, writer, actor, director, producer, uh, be somebody now be somebody is a line from the jerk steve martin uh when he had hit it rich and um and uh, uh yes but that's i mean that's the other the, the other thing is like what's what's fun and also distressing about getting older is that you you and i will have you know a, a venn diagram of references that'll cross to the point where you can you can make a noise and i know what the rest of the sentence is it's the and shorthand yeah it's the shorthand and and like that's what's really fun about comedy is where you just keep breaking it down so that you it's you're playing a game of of comedy tennis with somebody as, and, as i i was talking with gary Janetti last week and it's you know it not to be too precious about it which i think is how i framed it before but it's kind of like music it's kind of like you know you're you're communicating on a an, an unspoken level or, or a barely spoken level where you can get, you, you can sum things up with a look or a whistle or a, you know, yeah. whatever, a single but, word. And, and I don't, I mean, I think name. we're, we're, we're doing it as a, uh, as a living, but it's like, you know, if you ever play golf with people who are in, in insurance and other businesses, they're still going to turn to each other and go, my wife. And right. then, and then the other person's going to laugh because they, they both like that character. Right. And, and it, and it, I don't know, it's just, it connects people. So, I mean, that's, that's, I think the reason I got in to comedy is, is that it becomes, uh, you know, it's a, it's a social lubricant in the sense that like you connect with people and you can make them happy and it's, it's fun. 250 big ones. Big ones. I'll take 200 <laughs> of the ballerinis and I don't remember exactly. But uh, yeah, when I saw the jerk, honestly, that um, you know, I was trying to think back of when or to when I was or first thought I was funny, and it was very early, like in fifth grade. I remember doing a, a little sketch or something in a talent thing at school, and it killed. And the sixth graders all came up and told me I was funny, so I was like, sweet. And then um, did something similar in high school. But when I, what I would do is I would watch The Jerk or listen to a Steve Martin album, which was, you know, it, truly a different time when, you know, the, the guy was just a rock star when that just had not been done in comedy. And I would just bring his bits to school and imitate him pretty well. And that was sort of my identity for a while was just sort of Steve Martin guy or Chevy Chase guy or, you know, imitate i always imitated people and teachers and mrs nuss okay mrs nussbaum uh i got the guys as long as you got I, a voucher i got them um <laughs> yeah the jerk the jerk the jerk um, well, you know what you know what's what i think is is weird about what we do is like when i see you or you see me or or like if i see seth or david goodman like we wind up often saying hello to each other in the other person's voice yeah, yeah. but you like in, in no other business can you walk into hypothetically your boss's office and go like hey what's going on you sound like this you know <laughs> and no, you it's considered can't. a compliment like i i see you so i'm i'm my respect is that i've 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 absorbed part of your personality john is that the family guy uh, pinball game uh it is uh but i came in here to show off oh. that naven 
too, Mike. And I forgot to tell him to write Be Somebody. But then Carl Reiner, who directed it, also signed it when he worked with us. And then Chevy. Boris, my buddy. What's that? My buddy, Chevy. Chevy. To Mike John Cocteau style, Chevy Chase. So um, just had to show that since we were talking about all that. But um, I was but there yeah. when it got signed. I, I remember. So I got these guys. Woo, nice. And then I got the, this is my, um, this is the only place in the house there's anything family guy. Hey, you know what I'm going to do? And I'm going to go ahead and, and talk about this. In the coming days or weeks, I'm going to start giving all this swag away. Nice. Yeah. Wait, wait so, is that a, I've not seen, oh, I, I did not see the mop way. on the head. Yeah, that was from, uh, from Comic-Con. That's a good so, one. I got I got some stuff, so I just got to figure out how to do it. I, I don't want any money or anything like that. And I actually got went to stamps.com and I got the post office to deliver a bunch of like packaging. So I'm just going to start shipping this shit out to people who will do something cool. So DM me if you want something and tell me, um, I don't know, to just I'm, I'm going to figure this out. So. DM me if you want a, a t-shirt, maybe your size and your address and your name and and promise to do something nice for somebody during this time. That's all, all I want. I feel incredibly fortunate, as I know you do, Johnny, to be hanging out in a comfortable home. Uh, you with I got a, fire, a gas fire going on. Come on. You with a fire, me with a pinball machine and, and family guy things and posters that I got signed. And, um, you know, I just... I feel lucky during this time. I know a lot of people are having a tough time. So um, I don't know. Hey, Sarah Dawn, 1985, what would you like? Do you want a um, Consuela t-shirt? If so, shoot me on DM, shoot me your size and your address and I will send you one. Um, they're men's sizes, so uh, however that translates. Um, and I'll, ch I'll, I'll check all that. And it, won't, it won't be there tomorrow, but I'm, I'm gonna get to this, so anyway. What have I gotten myself into now? It's all right. You know what? You're, you're giving back. That's right. You have to. Uh, yeah. So, so you're working on Duncanville. Yeah, Duncanville is 8.30 work p.m. on uh, Sunday nights. We have, uh, I think they're going to air four more. Okay. Uh, it's, I, it's been a really fun experience. Ty Burrell, Amy Poehler, uh, Ricky Lindholm. Uh, yeah, it's uh, Natalie Palmitas, James Adomian. We, yeah, we, uh, Joey Asmansky. We have a really good. Uh, these sounds like these sound like diseases. Are these people? Yes, no, they're they're people, but they're, oh. they're diseases of comedy. They get in your system. Okay. Uh, but yeah, no, it's it's been really fun to to work with new characters. I mean, I, I the same thing when I came over to Cleveland. I think the the most fun thing about a new show is that they haven't done all these things before. So on Family Guy, there are there is that reality of like, okay. Well, we've seen Stewie do this. We've seen Stewie that. Have we seen him do it in this way? Right. Um, and and so I think what's what's been fun for me is just sort of like experiencing a new world. And it's you know it's created by Mike Scully and Julie Scully. And uh, yeah, I mean they they they've got a great sense of humor that's different than you know. I mean they've been on The Simpsons, so I mean they've a slightly different sense of humor. But they but they're also open to so wacky stuff that that i enjoy like I, I i think the purpose of animation for the most part and we did it on the cleveland show is to to make things happen that you can't have live action so that's i think there's a lot of visual fun that we're having on this show and i'm right i'm, I'm enjoying it i hope people are liking it cool. it's, it's so tough now with like a million things but people are locked locked in their houses hopefully they're finding it and it's on hulu they're right go. or stulu yeah. you know stulu would be funnier <laughs> um but um yeah so stulu. hey i um do i want to uh, watch stulu no, I don't. And, you know, okay. I love a poop joke, but I don't want to see poop. I, you know, if somebody sent me a picture of a turd that looks like a question mark, I don't think it's funny. I'd just say, why did you just show me that turd? Um, I love that there's a line. <laughs> yeah, there's That's a brown a line. line. There's a brown line. Yes, uh, <laughs> Ethan Baker, I did have a conversation with Gary Gennetti last week. And um, so what I'm, what I'm doing, and I actually was clearing out space on my laptop today so I can transfer all these to my laptop to put them on. I have a YouTube channel, which I, is just sort of a placeholder right now, but I'm gonna put all of these up in the coming days and I will, um, I will let everybody know when these conversations are on that YouTube channel, which right now just has a kicked in the nuts and some other random things that I've done. Crosseyedtv.com has no hyphens in it, just cross-eyed, C-R-O-S-S-E-Y-E-D, tv.com. 
has a whole bunch of old funny stuff that my brother and I made and a lot of Family Guy and Cleveland Show clips and songs and things. So that's the end of that plug. Uh, so what, uh, what do you want to do, Johnny? What's, what's in your future? I know you've made some short films. I think you got one into Sundance, if I'm not mistaken. I did. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to say how many years ago, but yes, a, a number of years ago. I, I, we actually had two. One that was co-written by Alec uh, uh, that we had. And then a few years later, I wrote one uh, that was just, yeah, a short that I, two shorts. So I had two shorts and Sundance. Um, but then, I mean, that was pre, as you know, pre-advent of uh, being able to just post a video on here. So, I mean, that was when, if you had an idea, you had to find somebody who had 16 millimeter camera and that, you know, you could hopefully get short ends or, mm -hmm. or get somebody who will, you know, throw it in what they're developing. And I mean, right. it was, it, you know, and then you have to transfer it and your computer can barely handle it. And it's low res. Right. <laughs> so it takes months and months and it's three grand and now... Cut it on an avid oh. and then do a layback to get it back to yeah. an answer print. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, and then you, you're submitting it on uh, on VHS tapes that are look terrible. Yeah. Yeah. My so, my friend Woody Woodruff is a asking who Alec is. Woody Alec is um, our good friend who is current showrunner of Family Guy and a very funny guy. And John and Alec grew up together and got into comedy together. So, uh, yeah. I can't type as fast as my brain. Family Guy always makes me go. I can't believe they fucking went there and they go there. Well, thank you. I hope you like that. Meal, meal ten of Ellie. Levy. Ten of Levy. Ten of Levy. Yeah. You've never heard that before. Meal ten of Levy. No, just yeah. now. It's the first time. I won't forget it though. I, I um, feel like I'm getting very used to because, like, now I'm I'm. In John, can you say we now return to? We now return to Mike Henry at home in his basement. Hi. All right. Um, yeah. Thank you, John. Uh, sure, sure. But uh, what was I was going to say, oh, no, I, like one of the things I, I've now gravitated towards during during these times is, uh, uh, and I try not to look at the total sum of hours, but I've played a game called Rocket League now uh, for a while. So I'm I'm used to seeing lots of, names that are all scrunched up and often with numbers in them uh so okay. so like when i see someone's actual name it, it confuses me because i only know people by their uh their what numb to plume or whatever would be numb to play sure name. sorry um you play video Brewster, games, mike my good what's that you play video games mike uh, all the time what's the uh, name of you that's what the name of your youtube channel is again uh, i think it's just if you search my name i'm not sure it's a cross-eyed something or no uh, the the website is crossidtv.com. The YouTube channel is just my name. Serious question from Jordan Rubin. Uh, can you both remember a joke you fought but didn't get on the air, Cleveland or Family Guy? Yes. When Meg had transgender surgery in the future, they would not let us say that she had an adictomy. So there's one. And then there was also a time where John Stossel. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's. That's one that just didn't get through the ranks of, of, our, <laughs> of our comedy leadership at the time. Uh, it's too, too, too tough to explain. And Monty Brewster, my friend Josh Huff, just had his second child last week. What's up, my brother? I love you. And I uh, hope you are happy. Hope you guys are home and safe and, and uh, whatever. Hope uh, you get to sneak out back, if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Uh, my friend, someone named Silvio, which I don't know if that's a man or a woman, uh, okay. asked how many push-ups I can do, and I'd okay. love him or her to come over, and we could we could try it out. All right. Do you, do you work out right now? Are you still are you are you in a workout mode? Uh, you know what? I'm in a losing weight mode. Um, okay. And I just feel like I had so much muscle on me that I'm trying to lean yeah. lean down. Yeah. That's yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I, as you saw, I did the 12 ounce curl, but uh, you know, I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to stay healthy. Yeah, it's, it really does suck not being able to go out for walks and all that. But you can't uh, go out for walks. Why not? I mean, you, well, I, I'm saying where I live, there's no sidewalk. But I, I'm just saying, you know, it's it's I don't know. I, I feel like especially I mean, I feel really bad for everyone who's in, you know, a city lockdown in an apartment. Yes. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, hopefully, hopefully we'll all be able to go back outside. I mean, if we get better masks, just wear hazmat suits everywhere. Right. I, I was just wearing a Richard Nixon mask. Um, but uh, <laughs> it didn't really work. Um, but that was a, that's a perfect example. Like my my Richard Nixon, like my parents gave one to me uh, 
for Halloween, I think when I was five or something. <laughs> and then they laughed and I was like, oh, they can be nice. Um, and so that was like, I was like, oh, I just, if I can make them laugh, there, you know, there's less hitting. And, okay. Uh, and, wow. uh, no, there wasn't as much. It was it, that hitting would mean touching me, but I, I, it, but them just saying that the derision goes away. So it's like you, I just remember having a Nixon mask and going, if I can do this, my parents will laugh. <laughs> right. And, and I'm not in trouble for those 30 seconds. Right. Right. Which well, is kind of what comedy writing is, is you get to be funny. Everyone laughs. And then 30 seconds later, it's like, where's the next fucking joke? So would they make you wear it out in public so people wouldn't see your bruised face? Uh, <laughs> no, no, I wasn't allowed in public. You know what we're joking I, about? We're joking, people. We're joking about John's pain. It's okay. Is it okay, John, that we're making these jokes? Yes, of course. All right. All right. Um, yeah, so we got about eight or nine minutes left, and this thing does cut you right off at the All top right, of the well, hour. Wait, wait, I'll answer but, anything. Yeah, yeah. Keep, keep the questions coming. Um, uh, yeah, someone wants to know... Uh, Fire, fire, T fall. If you had the same parents, um, we don't have sidewalks, but we still go out for walks. The real Michelle Morgan. Yeah, you can walk without a sidewalk, right, Michelle? Huh? Yeah. No, I, I'm. Go. I'm just saying. I like. I mean, it's just. It's. It's weird when you like as a single person. I don't know. I, like. I'm. I'm not upset with any. Sorry, I'm not single. I. As a. I'm. Um, but uh, I'm just saying that like to not be able to to congregate with friends and you know it's like. I think it sucks when you don't have the ability to have, you know, a, a full home is all I'm saying. What, what are your favorite quarantine outfits? Now, I'm going to go ahead and, and blow the whistle on myself. See, I've been wearing, like, these Lululemon pants. I have a couple pairs of these, and I have a bunch of pairs of uh, just straight up, you know, comfy sweatpants that I wear. How about you, Johnny? Uh, I've I've been in sweatpants. I I ordered some champion sweatpants, and I got really excited. And then they got here, and they were like, those those nineteen seventies rocky ones that come up too high that are really heavy. Yeah. And, and then I was like, so now I'm just back to, to boxer shorts. Oh, okay. Cool. Um and then and then occasionally I feel like I've You like to I'll peek out a, of them once in a while? Sometimes a ball, yeah. That's something or something will depends on the angle. Like you, you things can move, you know, if it anyway. Uh <laughs> but I, I do occasionally do the mad dash to get the mail when I hear no traffic. Um, but for the most part, I'll throw on like, I'm you know, like running shorts. I think running shorts and a t-shirt. I, I, I have noticed that I've been much more meticulous during my showers at getting clean, knowing that another shower may be days away. Okay. So, yeah, but I, yeah. I'm getting, I'm getting multiple day use out of a lot of shirts. Uh, and we're getting a, a question from Lily, 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 oh, that's, Lily. That's Lily. What is your favorite quarantine drink? Um, well, you know, it's funny. She thinks I drink a lot, but it's only when she's here. Um, okay. Because then it gives me something to make it easier. I, Is that I a coping mechanism? A coping mechanism. mechanism. Uh, she, every time she makes me a drink, I, I thank her and then I go and remake it. But uh, I, I've noticed that I don't drink hard alcohol when I'm at home. So, okay. it, yeah, that's, that's the only thing I've noticed. Not that it's interesting. But. So oh, I've been no, drinking. I mean, that's, that's good. That's I, like, good. I like a glass of wine. And I, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm having a beer, but I, uh, you know, like, I just, I like a little something. You're, I'm going to be home all night. So I don't, I don't have to, I don't have to take a shot of tequila. I'll be okay. Right. You know, I prefer a shot of tequila. I, I like, I, 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 I like a real cold, yeah, straight up uh, reposado. Just like to, to sip it. I, I like. I'm with you, but I mean, I mean you're a healthy guy now, Mike. I mean, not that you weren't before, but you're, you're, you're taking care of yourself. I, I got in in great shape last year and I've fallen off, but I'm, I'm kind of maintaining at a little healthier level than I used to. So, um, yeah, man, you just, I, you, you, the older you get, man, you just can't, uh, you can't let yourself go or it's, it's going to be all over. Do you, do you remember when, uh, like, I think it was my first season there, you decided that you were going to go on the, the niacin regimen, and then you turned beet red, and you were in pain. <laughs> I took niacin twice, I think. I wanted to see if it was... It, yeah, it was as if if you had taken a cross-section of any part of my body, it would have been red like a candle all the way through. It was... <laughs> yeah, I've, I've got genetically high cholesterol, so I'm on a tiny little bit of a statin drug for that, and I was trying not to be on that, and fuck it. No, I, yeah. I, I'm with you. No, being yeah. healthy, it, it's much easier to take a, a drug than to get in shape or to eat well. 
Um, right. Now, there's a guy named The Grain Room who wants to know if I invested, if I'm a part owner of a bar in Silver Lake. Okay. Uh, and and uh, I think I, I know, know who the guy in The Grain Room is. What? I think I know who the guy in The Grain yeah, Room Yeah, yeah. No, I... I I I can't answer that question because unfortunately I know I sent some money to them about six years ago, but I don't know if I'm still an owner of it. Uh, but I, I appreciate the question. Okay, the, the green room is uh, I believe Chris Sheridan, correct? It is Chris Sheridan, who actually runs his own. Uh, well, actually, you shouldn't know about it, but yes, he he he's a purveyor of uh, spirits uh, in oh, Connecticut. I and, didn't and know a, that. A, a part-time family guy writer as like my I am and creator of a new show called Resident Alien. All right. Am I Sweet. Now, Chris, that? when I first started on Family Guy as a staff writer, I had never written uh, anything longer than five minutes. I was brought in as a, a jokester and a, a character person. And uh, and Chris, I, I, Chris was like the, the, the guy that could friggin' crank out a great script. And so, I, you know, he had it going on. So, um, what's the new show called i believe it's called resident alien chris okay did, did he already just um, did he just come on to, to troll me and then leave i can't remember. i don't know mexican coke i prefer mexican coke to uh regular coke if i'm gonna have a coke right you like the sugar instead of the corn syrup i like the sugar i i have not had a i, I because i had this is boring but like i'm trying to be healthy so i haven't had yeah. a coca-cola it's the same thing with alcohol and everything else like when you give stuff up they go, well, what, instead of the Coca-Cola, why don't you have maybe some seltzer water with just a little bit of uh, apple cider vinegar? You no, can... fuck that. No, but no. I'm just saying, so I haven't had a Coca-Cola in like five or six weeks. And every weeks? day I, okay. I, have one, I have one in the fridge and I look at it every day and I, then, then I just pour water. But, I, but the point is, I love Mexican Cokes. I like regular Cokes. I, um, I have had, I think the last Coke I had was probably in 2018. Um, I just, I can't, I can't do it. I don't care about it. All um, right. But there are things that people like, I don't, I don't know. I don't Chris know Sheridan, I love you, buddy. Um, John Viner, when did you discover you were talented with voices? I don't. I just, same for me. I discovered it when I was a kid and when I imitate everyone. But I'm not as good at voices as you are. So I just like, my thing is I enjoy doing them. So I feel like my, like I'm, I'm in the sort of, like Jimmy Fallon SNL world of voices. I mean, actually, he's pretty good too, so that's not a fair thing. I'm just like, you always know it's me when you hear me on Family Guy, but I enjoy doing it and I feel like- You're, you're hilarious. I love your voices. Thank you. No, it's hilarious. But I'm saying, I, I don't think I'm like ultimately a perfect mimic. I just sort of try to find the thing that I find funny about someone and then that's I repeat, it. or you exaggerate the thing that you find funny. Yeah. And, yeah. and, I, and to me, that's, and, and a lot of times what I find interesting is if I can't, like sometimes if, you are, if I were to say, can you do an impression of blank? You would say, no, I can't. But then you would hear somebody else do an impression and you could immediately do their impression because right. they figured out what the, the, the things right. are. We could so do Dana obvious. Carvey's George Bush. Yeah. Yes. Right. But I would never have done a not going to do it. You know, like I, I would never have found that. Right. You know, without somebody else just, you know. I got you. They'll um, we're running out of time, Mike. Yeah, we're going to get cut off in like less than a minute. So, um well, I, I'm I'm down for this another time. If you are, maybe in the next couple of weeks. That's very fun. This, uh, Ma this Mavis is up for this. Again. Oh, hey, Mave. Um, this but, is this but, is her reminding me that uh, dinner should have been served already. That's this. This isn't love. This is. We'll go do it now. I'm gonna yeah, go fine. do some 420 action. Maybe. Oh. Um, just kidding. I'm I'm in Virginia. Hey, uh, tomorrow night, Eric Stanley. Wednesday, Al Thompson. Thursday, Alex Sulkin. John Viner. You're freaking great. Uh, I can't wait to come back out and hang out with you. Thank you for doing this. My Thank best for to Lily me. and Mavis. And what's the other dog's name? Taco? Bobo. All right, Bobo. All right, man. Peace out. Go, everybody. Do your dream. Love <laughs> it. Talk to you guys later. <laughs> Bye. Thanks, John. Bye.